Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Uh, today is going to be a challenging project. As you can see here, I have a jumble of scraps. I have some warm-up exercises and if you remember from the previous video, I have this a piece of paper with pastel drawings which I used for transfer and I have used some of it for collage and my project today is to make sense of all these scraps and create a cohesive or coherent composition so uh, my weapon will be my pair of scissors and some Mod Podge. So anyways, um, I have here my copy paper pieces, mostly black and white. Now this is a vector image which I downloaded online. And Here's my black tissue paper, which I use to create uh, these elements, kind of like uh, to do some blocking. So I'm going to start with this piece. Now I'm not quite sure what the result will be, just like in many of my projects. But I think this will be pretty useful. So what starts out as seemingly random shapes after a while will make a little more sense when I assemble them. Now I may or may not use some of these pieces. But I have something to work with. side and bring out my watercolor paper. And I 
again I'm going to use my handy template or my bib as I call it because what the bib does it defines the space that happens to be the same size as the gel plate because my plan is to start assembling these pieces and print uh, additional layers of acrylic over them Okay, I think that makes a little more sense. There's an underlying scaffolding or grid pattern which I rely on to make sense of what's a seemingly jumble of random shapes. So once I put down the initial structure, I can place additional layers of color. So I'm going to start by mounting these pieces with my Mod Podge. Okay, I'm back. I'm ready to start mounting. As you can see, I'm just using a regular house paint brush. This is not a fine art brush. And it does the job. And this is my Mod Podge. Let me just turn on this light. There, that's better. And this has been diluted previously. So it's a little more watery than usual. I'm going to start with the tissue paper. So the black areas define the composition. 
clear the scaffolding, so to speak. Okay, so that's a black area. Now what I'm hoping will happen is that the, once I apply the acrylic paint on top of this pastel paper, the acrylic will fix the surface so it doesn't bleed because this pastel is notorious for bleeding because what it is is it's pigment suspended by chalk see it's not exactly uh, sealed yet so I'm just being careful not to overwork this and create too much of a smear So I'm just going very easy with the brush, trying to make as few brush strokes as possible so as not to disturb the powdered pigment. slippery okay now the paper tends to buckle a little that can't be avoided but once this dries this should be fine Okay, so I will let this air dry and then come back and we will start printing. Okay, now before I proceed, I am going to create a cheat sheet and trace out where the elements are because um, I want a guide. So when I put my stencils on the gel plate, I have very specific places where I want them. And since everything is going to be reversed on the plate, it's very helpful to have a kind of a map 
where these elements go. So I'm tracing these out with my Sharpie pen. And then you'll see when I place this on the plate, I'm going to flip it over and use the reverse side. So I have flipped the paper over, so I'm going to use the reverse side as my guide. And it will allow me to place my stencils on specific areas uh, because I want to expose what's underneath. So here I have my tray of my uh, reusable stencils and I'm placing them on the area that's designated by the Sharpie pen. Okay, I have my stencils in place and now I'm going to start placing the uh, acrylic paint on the, the top layer just to give it a sense of depth. So the color that I'm using is Raw Sienna by Blicrylic. And since it's uh, semi-transparent, I'm going to take advantage of that quality so it will show the collage pieces underneath. Now the other color I'm going to use is this bright yellow green by Artist Loft. And I think it's going to be a nice combination with the raw sienna. So I will apply the light green in the middle. And then the uh, raw sienna will be on the top and bottom layers.
and uh, since most of the area is covered with stencils I really don't need that much paint a little goes a long way So as you can see, I'm making sure that the uh, acrylic paint is transferring. So I'm applying a good amount of pressure 
I want it to go over the collage pieces and uh, so I'm giving the plate a good amount of pressure with my hand Okay, let's see what we got. This is the exciting part. Pretty cool. Okay. It's a pretty colorful result. And, uh, so I'm going to let this air dry and then con continue on to the next step. Okay, this piece is reasonably dry. Now I decided I want to use this magenta and hand color the white spaces or at least some of the white spaces uh, because I think there are too many of them so uh, since it's just a small amount I'm going to take my brush and mix a little amount here in this plastic tub and uh, I uh, will proceed to fill in these white spaces and I think it would give the piece a little more volume as you will see when I complete the uh, procedure. Okay, now that the magenta is done, I am going to use this fluorescent orange just to give the piece a little more of a contemporary look. So let me just rinse my brush and proceed with the fluorescent orange. Mm -hmm. 
Now since it's just a very small amount, I'm just going to work directly from the tube. Because a little goes a long way. And the areas that are going to be filled in are very small. So I'm just touching these small white areas with the fluorescent orange. Okay, now the last color that I will use is this light blue by Artist Law. Again, I'm going to rinse my brush and apply the last few areas of white space. Again, I'm just going to work directly from the two because it's just a very small amount that I need to complete the uh, picture. Now already I'm beginning to see the overall picture minus the white spaces. It looks more complete. Just a little more touch-ups on the sides. And I think I'm going to stop here. I think this piece is done. So I'm going to air dry this piece and um, recap. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, everybody, here's my favorite part of this project where I show the finished product. Um, now here's a close up. And as you can see, the pieces of pastel paper blend in with the layer of color from the gel plate. There's a slight texture. And there's also the brush mark texture done by the hand colored sections. But I think they all integrate together. But that's the whole point is to create like a harmonious relationship. So there you have it. I hope you liked this video. I had a lot of fun doing this piece. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. And for those who can, please lend a hand to my PayPal to help keep this channel going. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.